Hi, welcome to this short video on symmetric encryption in .NET using AES and GCM mode. My name is Stephen Haunts. The demo I'm going to run through in this short video is an excerpt from my course, Building Secure Applications with Cryptography in .NET at Pluralsight. If you're a Pluralsight subscriber, you can search for my name on the platform, or you can search for the name of the course. Or you can see the, the URL to the course on the screen here, and it's also in the description to this video. So symmetric encryption is a way of taking some data, encrypting it with a key so that you get some encrypted data back, which nobody can read. And then to reverse that encryption process, use the same encryption key to decrypt the data to get your original data back. This is why it's called symmetric encryption. Typically, when you do encryption using AES in .NET prior to .NET Core 3, you'd use something like the AES Crypto Service Provider class, and you'd use an encryption mode called Cypher Blockchain in. In this mode, you'd pass in your cipher text. So in this case, on the screen, it's Mary Had a Little Lamb. You'd pass in a key, which would be, for example, 32 bytes or 256 bits in length. And you'd also pass in what's called an initialization vector, which is 16 bytes of entropy, which is used to help kind of kickstart that first part of the encryption process. Then typically what you'd do is once you've got your cipher text, is you would then take a HMAC of that cipher text. And with that HMAC, you provide the same key that you use for encryption. This means that when you send your data to someone else, if they want to check that, that data is intact, first of all, they need that same key to recalculate the HMAC. They compare their new HMAC to the one that was sent to them. If they match, then they can then go and decrypt the data because they know it hasn't been tampered with. So that's typically in .NET what you had to do if you're using the base class libraries. As part of .NET Core 3.0 and above, a new mode was introduced called AES GCM or Gallius Counter Mode. Now, GCM mode isn't new in the world of AES encryption, but it is new for .NET. And the way it works is fairly similar, and this is what I'm going to show you in the demo in a moment. So here we have our cipher text, or our, so here we have our plain text that we pass in, so maybe we had a little lamb. We pass in what's called a nonce, which is similar to the IV, but it's 12 bytes in length or 96 bits. And again, that just kind of kickstarts the start of the encryption process. To decrypt the data, you have to provide the same nonce. We also pass in our key. So in our case, you know, we can use a 256-bit or 32-byte key. And you can also pass in something called associated data, which is effectively any metadata you want to be included along with the encryption process. So for example, if you was encrypting some customer data and you wanted to pass in the customer's key in the database, or you know, their kind of key ID in the database, you could you could pass that in as associated data. You don't have to, you could, you can just pass in null, that's fine. Now, what you get out the back of this is you get your cipher text, as you'd expect, and you also get something called the tag. Now, the tag is actually a HMAC of that data. So the HMAC process happens at the same time as the encryption process. Whereas in the previous example, you encrypt your data first, you get your cipher text, and then you do the HMAC. And this is deemed a much more secure way of using AES and is indeed the recommended way of using AES. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch over to a demo. And this demo is an excerpt from my course at Pluralsight. And that's going to show you how to use that in .NET. So if we go back to our solution in folder three, we're going to go back to our AES class. Now, previously, we talked about this class here, AES encryption. And we skipped over the AES GCM encryption file. So we're going to look at it this time. Now, you'd be glad to know that the usage of AES in GCM mode is incredibly easy to use. So what we looked at previously for AES Crypto Service Provider is probably the most complex bit of code we've looked at in this course so far. AES GCM mode, if you're using .NET Core 3.0 or higher, is actually remarkably easy to use, which is fantastic. So let's look in our class. So again, we have our generate random number method, exactly the same as what we looked at before, no change there. Now let's look at the encrypt method. So this time, our method takes a byte array, which is our data that we're going to encrypt. We take a key, 32 bytes in this case. We have a byte array of our nonce, which is conceptually similar to the initialization vector, except this time it's 12 bytes. And then we have a byte array, which is our associated data. Now this is really, the best way to think of it is just some arbitrary metadata that you can pass in along with your encryption method. It's not encrypted. It's not secret, it's just if you want to pass some metadata along, you can, and it all gets nicely packaged up with your ciphertext. Okay, so how do we use this? Well, it's very simple. So we generate a pre-instantiated byte array for our tag, which is 16 bytes long. Now the tag, don't forget, is a hash map of the data that gets returned to us. 
And we compute a pre-computed byte array of our ciphertext, which is the same length as our uh, data that we're encrypting. Now to use this, it's very simple. So we get our AES GCM class, and we create an instance of that, and we pass the key into the constructor. And then we simply just call aesgcm.encrypt, pass in the nonce, pass in the data to encrypt, pass in a reference to the empty ciphertext array that we want to populate, pass in our empty tag array, and we also pass in the associated data, which can be null if you want it to be. So once we've done that, our tag and ciphertext are populated. So at that point, I return a tuple of both our ciphertext and our tag. So very, very straightforward. Decryption is just as simple. So here we have a decrypt method. We pass in our ciphertext byte array. We pass in the same key. We pass in the same nonce. We have our tag, which we previously uh, generated through our encryption process. And then we have a byte array to put our associated data into. So we create a byte array for our decrypted data. We construct the AESGCM class again whilst passing the key in as the constructor. And then we call AESGCM.decrypt. And this takes the nonce, the ciphertext, the tag, our decrypted data uh, byte array that we created, and the associated data. Okay, so let's take a look at running this as an example. So I'm going to uncomment out this line here that we looked at before. So in our demo, again, we have a string, text to encrypt. We construct our AESGCM class. We create our key, which is 32 bytes. We create our nonce, which is 12 bytes. And then here we call encrypt, which gives us our tuple back, and then we call decrypt. So I think the best thing to do is just to run this. Okay, so let's step into our method. So we have text to encrypt, which is what we're going to encrypt. We construct our AESGCM class. We create our key, 32 bytes. We create our nonce, which is 12 bytes, which we can see here. Now I'm going to encrypt our data. Now, because it's a string, we've converted it to a byte array first, which is in here. So let's instantiate our tag, or our empty tag array. Let's instantiate our ciphertext. Create the instance of AESGCM, and then call encrypt. Now at this point, our tag is populated, so that's our HMAC of the data, and our ciphertext is populated, so we return that as a tuple. So now we want to decrypt that data, so that tuple that we returned was put into a variable called result, so here we can pass those individual pieces of data in. So again, we create a pre-instance byte array of our decrypted data, which is empty at this point. Construct AESGCM, passing the key in as a constructor, then we call decrypt by passing in our nonce, the ciphertext, the tag, our empty array that we want to populate, and our associated data. Then we call decrypt, which gives us our decrypted data. So now we can reflect those onto the screen so we can actually truly see that our data was decrypted properly. And here we can see that it is. So our encrypted data is the field in the middle there, and then we decrypted it back to the original text. So as you can see, AESGCM in .NET Core 3.0 and higher is incredibly easy to use. So if you're creating a brand new system and you haven't already got AES encrypted data in there, so you're starting from fresh, then I really do urge you to go to GCM first. So thank you for watching this short demo. Again, if you would like to learn more, then I have a much more expanded course on this topic on Pluralsight called Building Secure Applications with Cryptography in .NET. It's three hours of quite a big sort of deep dive in how to use random numbers correctly, hashing, HMAX, password storage, symmetric encryption, asymmetric encryption, digital signatures, and then finally how to use all of these different primitives together to do what's called hybrid encryption. There's a link in the description for this video. Thank you very much, and I hope you liked it.